hope you can see it the screen. So when we talk about uh, digital 3D reconstructions, and this also links to what Heather in the first presentation was uh, talking about, uh, there are a few challenges. The first one is the um, lack of intellectual transparency. So 3D reconstructions or archaeological evidence are sort of closed boxes and you can really see what are the data, what are the, the interpretation, what is the distinction and the boundaries between the two. Uh, there is usually the predominance of one single reconstruction, so this doesn't really account for the uh, alternative interpretation of the archaeological record. Uh, 3D reconstruction then are also mostly used uh, traditionally as digital counterpart of traditional illustrations, so not really exploited as tools for research and analysis. Um, and then, of course, there is limited reusability of 3D models uh, and also limited uh, reproducibility. So I'm an archaeologist, um, I'm not a computer graphic, I use these tools in, in a way, if you give the same data set to other people, it will produce a different uh, 3D reconstruction of, from the same uh, set of data. So the suggestion, the solution that I'm proposing uh, in this presentation is using a semi-automated uh, modeling approach, uh, procedural or root-based. Um, and I'm going to talk about uh, especially the uh, CGA shape grammar. So it's a sort of a unique shape grammar that you can find in a commercial software called uh, City Engine. So it's from Esri, the um, uh, manufacturer of uh, RJS as well. So I'm going to talk about the uh, rule set that I developed for uh, my PhD research for a case study in, uh, in Greece. Do, do you actually see the screen? I'm too high. <laughs> uh, so it's a multi-period site uh, in uh, Boeotia, central Greece. Um, we have been investigating the site. So actually the survey started in 2006 and I joined in, in 2009. It's an international team of, of uh, people. We had um, the micro topographic uh, recording of, of the hill, um, architectural survey, uh, pottery collection, geophysics, uh, all types of non-destructive uh, methods that you can use to analyze uh, a site. So the, my part on, uh, on this was to uh, create a 3DJS of the survey finds uh, and also to model uh, alternative reconstruction hypothesis on the uh, settlement in one historical phase, the 4th century BC. Uh, to investigate urban layout and uh, population figures. And here you can see a, sort of a chart of the workflow that I use, starting from the terrain. Here is basically on the uh, lower uh, part, there is the uh, workflow in city engine, so creating the street network, applying the root files, and I'm going to talk about in more detail uh, later on, and creating a tree visualization. Of course, starting from the survey data and uh, relying also on parallels with other uh, excavated uh, sites. Uh, the goals were also to focus, uh, from a methodological point of view, on intellectual transparency, uh, on the reproducibility of the reconstruction, uh, on visualizing also a possible alternative hypothesis, um, and using really this tool, this 3D reconstruction as a research tool. So I used a combination of GIS and procedural modeling uh, to do that. I'm going to talk about First, uh, the uh, sort of the 3DGS of the survey find. So I wrote um, the starting point where the um, uh, GPS points recording the uh, architectural finds on the hill. Uh, to, uh, to those points where there was a, a database with uh, uh, information about the actual the, the, the measurements, the dimension of these blocks, and I wrote a very quick uh, rule file that um, interrogates this database and then presents the uh, finds, um, so scales basically the, uh, the points according to the real dimension of the field, so you can see that it's a more intuitive way of looking at, at the data, so there are some concentration of um, particular types of, uh, of stones appearing. And at the same time, I created some manually modeled uh, 3D models of some sort of special finds. This, we think it's a, it's a theater seat. We, we are still not sure about that. Uh, but then the, the rule automatically place, uh, places the, this uh, 3D model on top on the uh, location um, and substitute the uh, GPS, GPS points with that. Um, the second part of the research focused on um, 
simulating alternative hypotheses on the urban layout. Uh, so this is a bit of, uh, of the rule file that I've written. What I, what I wanted to do was also to include comments uh, on the sources that I used. So here you see some example of, uh, uh, for example, modern ur urban planning, because this is a site on, on the slope. So I was in we were interested in uh, looking at also uh, how much the, uh, the slope would have influenced the choices in uh, uh, construction. Uh, so then uh, the, the root file allows you, I have a, uh, if it works, I have a, a small video to show you. Yeah, so the rule file allows you okay, the resolution is very uh, to change the value, uh, the input value of the slope threshold. So then it generates different hypotheses based on the on the slope value that you have um, included. So this because we have also historical sources for for the first century BC uh, in that um, in that region. So I was interested to um, simulate the number of houses. So you see how much it changes. Uh, and then uh, I included an automatic report of the, uh, of the number of houses that you, you would get with this, um, uh, with this simulation. Um, so here, that just to give you an idea about... Okay, so it doesn't work in, on this screen, but it works. But it works over there? Okay, um, so yeah, so the, the rules that are, that are written, the set of rules for this data set are going to be available soon on uh, GitHub. So if some of you want to have a look at it and play around with that, uh, they, will be, they will be there. Um, this doesn't seem to, to work actually. Um, again. We'll try. Yeah, okay, so just to show you, the resolution is not really helping me right now, but so there are a set of parameters um, that are used for the um, for the rule finds, um, and then you can change the, for example, the elevation of the uh, the height of a building or uh, other characteristics. Um, in this case, the floor height. I have another example afterwards uh, on another on a different data set to show you also this uh, this type of. Um, <coughs> uh, of modeling uh, alternative alternative hypotheses uh, to it. Let me see if I can. I meant to skip this part, but it doesn't it doesn't react. Okay. Um, yeah. So the. Um, uh, the advantage of this, of working with this uh, software, is that uh, is the interoperability with RGIS. So um, the city engine 3D scene is created by importing GIS data, and then you can export the scene also in uh, RGIS for further analysis. So in this case, I included a, a rule file that was uh, created by Esri that allows you to um, um, sample points and panels on the uh, surfaces of the building to then have um, visibility analysis, for example, in the, on, uh, uh, really on a sort of a true G 3D GIS. Uh, and of course, the fact that the 3D reconstruction and your uh, original data overlap is also a way to keep track of <laughs> what kind of reconstruction you're making and based on which kind of data. So it's also part of this uh, sort of intellectual transparency that I was trying to develop also with this uh, workflow. Um, and then, uh, talking about also the export possibility of this uh, scene, uh, I worked also with uh, Unity uh, 3D, so you can export the entire scene in FBX. Um, and there is also an online uh, uh, web viewer uh, where you can see I put uh, two different uh, hypotheses of the urban layout, and you can play around, for example, with uh, sunlight and how sunlight would impact uh, the, the urban environment. Um, so, as a second case study, I wanted to show you a little bit more sort of a step-by-step -step, um, uh, process of how you, you, you would go about modeling buildings with this uh, approach. And actually, this uh, <coughs> case study, I developed it because um, we worked uh, with my students in, uh, in Leiden, we worked with Blender, and we, uh, we modeled these uh, houses, the uh, insula of the painted vaults in uh, Ostia and we model it with uh, Blender, so with a manual modeling approach, and I wanted to show them how then you would uh, um, develop a procedural modeling about this, um, this specific building. So it's, it's meant for demonstration purposes, don't take it as a, 
sort of really archaeologically accurate uh, um, 3D reconstruction. And the idea is to model so different building heights uh, to get also perception of uh, space um, uh, and uh, of the, on, on the street level. So what I did was to here, then you get a bit uh, more familiar with uh, the city engine interface. I loaded a, an image, so the plan of uh, this uh, neighborhood in uh, Ostia, and I traced uh, the basically the 2D footprints of uh, of the buildings. Um, and here you can see there is a. Can you hear me if I step back from the microphone? So just uh, so I I used uh, I created two uh, attributes um, which I called. Uh, very, with a lot of fantasy, floors four and floors five. So these attributes uh, connect then to these uh, uh, three uh, uh, lines of rules. Uh, so basically it's a conditional rule and you can, um, in the case in which you enable this uh, attribute that you will find back in the inspector, then you give uh, different uh, commands uh, to, the, to the software. So for example, in the case in which the floors for attribute is, is true, then uh, the building needs to be extruded by 30 meters, and if the uh, other attributes for floor five is true, then the building needs to be extruded by 50 meters, etc. So in this way, you can, uh, by enabling or disabling this, um, the attributes in the inspector, you can create different, very quickly different uh, heights. Um, and then I, I went on by, uh, Yes, they're modeling the rest of the, of the facade. So this is uh, using a, a component split to uh, divide the 3D building according to their to the, its facade. So I use the colors to actually be able to understand on which facade I was working on. Um, and then going on, so you can see, of course, well, it's like a usual uh, scripting language how you, you would include, for example, comments about uh, this is a publication in the 60s that studied uh, this, uh, this building, so I wanted to, to include the reference to it uh, in this uh, link file. Uh, and in this case, the facades are uh, further modeled, um, again, using the, the different uh, attributes. So then, um, once again, by enabling or disabling the attributes, you will get different uh, uh, reconstruction. And here is further uh, using different uh, splitting, it's a split, uh, operation, so splitting along the X or along the Y axis, uh, then you can create uh, openings like the windows and, um, and doors. Um, and this, uh, on just uh, this small uh, rule with the asterisk at the end, allows you to iterate the process until the, basically until the geometry is uh, finished. So in this way, I could just uh, uh, model very quickly with uh, the windows, the two, the second and the third uh, uh, floor. Um, and of course, once you created one rule, and this is just a very simple example, very quickly, but then you can uh, uh, assign it to different um, uh, elements in the scenes uh, that you're working on, um, and again, have in real time um, uh, let's say the uh, the possibility to switch between different hypotheses. So here, for example, I have um, uh, so the height of the building. So starting from really the perception on the street level, and looking at then how the uh, uh, the street view would look like. And of course, you can do this by changing the parts that are a little bit more, uh, let's say, uncertain in the 3D reconstruction. So changing the position of windows or uh, other elements that are that are not clear, and see what is the result in the in the visualization. So, thank you for thank you for listening. And if you have uh, any question about this uh, approach, or if you want to develop, uh, if you want to get in touch, I mean, just uh, uh, contact me. I'll be happy to have a talk about that. Thank you.